and we're good to go. And Cindy, take it away. You can do all the introductions. All right. Thank you, Lorraine. Happy International Day of the Midwife 2016, and welcome to the Georgetown Student Cafe. My name is Cindy Farley, and I'm a midwife and faculty at Georgetown University's online nurse midwifery and women's health nurse practitioner education programs. Joining me later will be Jennifer Jagger, also a midwife and faculty at Georgetown University, and the current chair of the American College of Nurse Midwives Political Action Committee. We are so delighted to be broadcasting out to midwives and midwifery students around the globe. Eighteen midwifery students in their final terms are here on campus to, ex to share their experiences learning advocacy skills on Capitol Hill in Washington, D.C. It was a happy occurrence when we realized that our students' on-campus time and their visits to federal legislators fell on the International Day of the Midwife. We used the materials prepared by the organizers of this day in our messages to our politicians and their staff. Before we get started, I would like to acknowledge a number of people who brought this event to fruition. The entire midwifery faculty of Georgetown University has been supportive of these visits on Capitol Hill and the Student Cafe. Um, this is a slide of some, but not all of our esteemed faculty. The staff and volunteers of the American College of Nurse Midwives have helped with the scheduling of the visits and preparing our students to discuss currently supported federal legislation of interest to midwives here in America. And the organizers of this event are to be commended for their hard work, in particular Seal Jevett of Yale's Midwifery Education Program and Lorraine Mockford, our tech support for this session from Nova Scotia. They both have been very helpful and we thank you. Whether you are a fan of the fictional television show Scandal or House of Cards, or if you've been following the circus show that is the American presidential election process, we know that politics and policy are important to the health of women and their families. Midwives can make a difference in the health policy arena for midwifery and women's health by advocating for legislation that promotes social justice and the common good. Political participation is addressed but not a focus in basic midwifery education as students and faculty are prioritizing the acquisition and application of the foundational midwifery knowledge and skills to become safe beginning midwives. However, once new graduates step out into practice, they begin to realize the importance of legislation and regulation on the ability to practice to the full extent of their training and expertise. This importance is usually experienced as legislative barriers to practice. New midwives need to have beginning skills in political advocacy in addition to beginning skills in midwifery care in order to make significant positive change. Georgetown University, with, with its geographic location in Washington, D.C., and its history of proactive engagement in federal relations in the United States, is ideally situated to provide powerful experiential learning for their midwifery students. Today, our students uh, scheduled visits with their United States senators and representatives on Capitol Hill. Uh, as Congress is in recess this week, we uh, met mainly with legislative aides and interns involved in health care. We anticipated that students would learn about the latest legislative initiatives of interest to midwifery and women's health at the national level, gain experience in communicating the value of midwifery and its contributions to women's health to legislators and other stakeholders, and appreciate the uh, influence of law and policy on midwifery practice and the healthcare system. We hope going forward that these students who have had such powerful learning experiences in political advocacy will be more likely to engage in the health policy arena. 
I'm now going to turn the microphone over to the various students who will share their experiences and answer any questions that you have. Thank you. Hello, my name is Nicole Mortensen. And I'm Brianne Hutt. We are from Safford and Phoenix, Arizona. The Grand Canyon and Saguaro Cactus are in Arizona, and we are located in the southwestern United States. There are 190 midwives that are licensed in Arizona currently. Midwives attend nearly 6% of all vaginal births in the state. This is better than many other states, but we have a long way to go to ensure the ideal of a midwife for every woman. Arizona is considered an independent practice state, meaning we do not have to have uh, supervision by a physician. Today we visited Republican Senator Jeff Flake's office and met with a representative for Republican Senator John McCain. Then I met with Senator, or the Senior Legislative Assistant for Republican Congressman Paul Gosar. And during the meetings today, I learned how enthusiastic these representative assistants are and how much midwifery really makes an impact across the world. We heard personal stories about how midwifery had involved people in their family and their friends. Um, and it's great that we were able to talk to them one-on-one -on -one and really um, impact their thoughts about midwifery in the United States. And I met with the Chief of Staff for Democratic Congresswoman Ann Kirkpatrick, who is pregnant and due to give birth in June. And she, her birth will be attended by some local uh, Washington, D.C. midwives. And both um, the Chief of Staff and Ann are both they're friends of midwives. They understand the importance of midwives. Where I live in Arizona is very rural. Um, you know, we're a two-hour car drive from any sort of metropolitan area, as is most of the area that um, Congresswoman Ann Kirkpatrick is over. And so they understand the importance of getting midwives out to the people where they're at. Um, and we talked about some legislation that can support that. So happy International Day of the Midwife. Goodbye. Thank you. Hi, my name is Kate Washburn. I'm from Fairfield, Ohio, the heart of it all in the Midwestern part of the United States. Ohio has produced more U.S. presidents than any other state, but unfortunately it doesn't look like we'll be producing one this year. There are 359 midwives licensed to practice in Ohio, and midwives do about 6.8% of the births. I visited Congressman Mike Turner, Senator Sherrod Brown, and Senator Rob Portman's offices. It was really empowering to go out and educate as to what midwives are. Uh, two of the aides had no idea. One said, like, I think I have a cousin who's a midwife, but I don't really know what she does. So uh, it was great to educate and ask for support. I felt like the reaction was positive. Uh, the aides were engaged. They were supportive. And overall, it was a fun, rewarding, and educational experience. So I see myself continuing to stay active in the promotion of midwifery and legislation um, to allow midwives to practice to the full extent of our education and training. Happy International Day of the Midwife. Hello, my name is Heidi Crookshank, and I am pursuing my midwifery education in Seattle, Washington, in the Pacific Northwest of the United States. Uh, the population of Seattle is 662,400. And the Seattle Public Library items in circulation are 11,744,874. And if that number doesn't knock your socks off, compare it with New York City, population 8.5 million. Circulating materials, 6.6 .6 million. So a very educated, curious place to live. And going right along with that, when I spoke with uh, aides and advisors to Senator Murray, Senator Maria Cantwell, and Representative Jim McDermott today, all three of them knew what midwives were, what they could do, and nodded knowingly when I still reiterated what we could do. And uh, had a very nice talks with all three office representatives. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed today. I had the special privilege of going to meet with uh, those offices accompanied by um, Jesse Bushman, who was in a previous slide, um, and Patrick Cooney. And I, I really appreciate this opportunity. Thank you very much, Georgetown faculty, and happy International Day of the Midwife.
Hello, my name is Leisha Johnson. I'm from Howell, New Jersey. And in New Jersey, we have 299 midwives. That was in 2015. And uh, certified nurse midwives have attended 7,437 births in 2013, which is 7.25% of all births. And vaginal births uh, were attended by midwives at 11.69%. Uh, today, we met with Senator Bob Menendez of the Republican Party and Senator Cory Booker of the Democratic Party. We met with their staffers, and we, were, we had some mixed uh, reviews, uh, mixed experiences with them, mixed levels of education regarding midwives and uh, mixed reception of midwives. And we really learned the importance of advocacy for women's health care legislation. And we are the voice of the women, and it is important for us to spread education about who we are as midwives and what we do. And we, uh, going forward, definitely are looking forward to uh, getting more involved in the legislative process and really uh, moving forward with improving health care for women and improving outcomes. Uh, with legislation in the future. And my name is Lori Noth. Um, I went along with Lisha, who you just heard speaking, uh, to talk to the senators and a congressman uh, of the state of New Jersey, where I also live. I live in Hoboken, New Jersey, which is outside of the New York City metro area. Uh, so it's a really interesting patient population um, with really individual needs, uh, considering the region and the diversity and just women's health care needs in general being so unique woman to woman. Um, like Leisha said, we had a really interesting day on the Hill, um, but I think the most important thing to think about when you're advocating for women's health or for midwifery is that the most important thing is just to show up. So just to be there, just to show yourself, just to be visible, uh, no matter what country you're in or no matter what city you live in, what kind of town you live in, um, or the types of uh, limitations or challenges that you face as a midwife, um, just showing up and letting people know about that is important. Um, and most importantly, what we found today was that people didn't really care how much you know until they know how much you care. So if you go in there with something that you're passionate about, um, whether it's uh, a bill that's being passed uh, in legislature that could really pave the way for other midwives, or if it's some kind of social constraint that you have in the community that you're in that would um, possibly interfere with the delivery of healthcare to women or your own um, provider uh, care, I think that it's important to know what those things are and just to, to identify the problems that you have and to go out in front of somebody and that, that can make a change, whether it's a, a congressperson or a senator or um, some kind of a community leader, and just get it out there because that's where change begins. And so if, if there's enough people like there is on a day like today for the International Day of the Midwife, many voices speak together and they're all speaking for the women that do not have voices. And that is what midwifery is all about. So even if you're not uh, experienced in politics, if you don't know how a bill is passed, it doesn't matter if you love midwifery and if you think that women deserve that, then there's something that you can do. And it's just a matter of showing up. So um, happy International Day of the Midwife from us here at Georgetown and uh, get out there and make a change. You're already doing it with every one of your patients. So. Keep it up. Hi, my name is Stacy Karen. Hi, my name is Stacey Sheeran, and I am um, also representative of the student um, body of Georgetown Nurse Midwives. And I come from the state of Virginia. Um, where we have currently, as of 2015, 263 certified nurse midwives. Um, within that, we have 736 of the 7,376 of those attended births by certified nurse midwives. The percentage of all births attended by certified nurse midwives in the state of Virginia is 7.22 percent, and the percentage of all vaginal births attended by certified nurse midwives is 10.65 percent. So. Uh, with that, our state does need um, more representation of the certified nurse midwives, and I am glad to say that I will be one of those to help add to the number in that state. Um, today, I was able to speak with um, two representatives. Thank you. Um, so Mark Warner was not available, but I spoke with Charlie Arnowitz, and then, um, and he's part of the Senate, and then 
our representative for my district, um, Randy Forbes, was not available, so I spoke with Chris Manable. I also had the privilege of speaking with them last year with the ACNM conference when we did lobbying. So it was quite impressive that they did remember um, seeing me last year and remember some of the points that I mentioned prior. Um, and so when I asked them again if they remember what a midwife was, it was nice to hear that they still remembered. Um, but it was also important to note that um, they did kind of forget that we are um, studied under um, master's degree prepared and there are some differences that they didn't quite understand and that was nice to be able to educate them on that. They also didn't understand a shortage and they didn't understand what great benefit a midwife is in practice to the to women, children and their families because as we know when we care for the woman we care for the entire family. So it was important to make sure that they understood that. Um, in addition to we um, were also able to bring bring into light the bills that we currently have um, in play in both the Senate and the House. Um, so they were very impressed to hear that and see what ways they can help to make things better for, um, for everyone. My name is Elizabeth Lannan. I'm a student nurse midwife at Georgetown University, and I actually live right here in Washington, D.C. Washington, D.C. is a great place to be a midwife. It's an incredibly independent and supportive practice environment in D.C. Uh, we do have representation from Delegate Eleanor Holmes Norton. Unfortunately, she does not have a vote, so I chose to join Stacy um, to talk about Virginia. Um, and what was really wonderful about um, um, visiting people and talking about Virginia is the staff members that we were meeting with, they represent Virginia, but they all live in Washington, D.C. So when I was able to tell them that midwives practice right here in Washington, D.C. There are 33 certified midwives in D.C. and 10.7% of births in D.C. are attended by CNM. It really um, kind of drove the point home that the, the hospitals that are right there in their neighborhoods have practice in CNM and their family, their friends, their neighbors are having births attended by certified nurse midwives. Um, so it was really wonderful to talk to them about that um, and also just learn more about the state of Virginia. Hi, this is Katie. I am also in DC, but decided to join along with Stacy in the Virginia meetings. Um, just to echo what they said already, um, I was really impressed with how much more interest they seem to have this year from the meeting that Stacy had last year. Stacy said in one of her meetings last year, she was in the hallway for five minutes. This year, we got to sit in the representative's office and spent over 20 minutes and he was engaging us in a lot of questions, clarifications, um, and just where the future of midwifery is. I think there's a lot of intent, um, um, focus on this now as people are really looking to their birth choice. So I'm happy to be a part of this community, happy to be um, here celebrating International Day of the Midwife. Hello, my name is Ashley Hornsby Clark, and I'm from Sulphur, Louisiana, home of Mardi Gras. And currently in my state, there are 52 licensed midwives to practice. And um, as of 2013, there were 2.62% of midwives that attended all births and 4.27 that attended vaginal births. I visited with David Vitter's healthcare advisor, Taylor, and also with Bill Caskey's advisor, Genevieve. And what I found was they were very receptive to the information that we were there to present. I went into this very naive and um, not knowing very much about the legislative process, and I still uh, do, do not know very much at all about the legislative process, but what I do know is that our presence here on the Hill today was important, it was necessary, and whatever, even if, even if my senators do not come on board with the bills, I planted a seed. So that next go round, when the next cohort comes, that seed can blossom a little more and a little more and, and a little more until it's time for them to finally jump on board. 
and I'm excited about that. I'm excited to go back home to Louisiana, which is not a midwifery friendly state, take what I've learned here, apply it to my state, and hopefully Louisiana can start to have better outcomes and we can take care of um, women with all of these healthcare disparities that come from a very poor area. So I'm very, very, very excited to take what we've done here on the Hill back home and happy International Day of the Midwife from um, us over here on the Hill with Georgetown University. Hello, this is Morgan. And this is Marian. And we are talking to you in DC, but we are from Illinois. I am from Chicago, Illinois. And I'm from Belleville, Illinois, which is right across the um, state line from Missouri. We have 444 midwives in the state of Illinois. Uh, we do 8.9% of the births in the state. And we have two birth centers, um, one in Chicago and then one out um, in the rural area. And this um, has taken about 10 years to get a birth center up and running. So it's um, been brought to you by some wonderful midwives um, locally in Chicago, and they did an incredible job getting that up and running. Um, today, we visited um, Senator Durbin, who spoke to his legislative aide, and it, she, it was such an encouraging meeting. Um, she reinforced and reaffirmed Senator Durbin's interest in women's health and in midwifery, um, and even told us about other bills that he's supporting to increase um, funding to midwives and um, Title VIII, and um, was very interested in the bill that we talked about today. Um, so that was very exciting to hear that he was on board with the work that we are yes, doing. Absolutely. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't get to meet with anybody else um, on our list from from our state who represents um, the voters in our state, but we were able to drop off some informational material, and uh, we we do hope that uh, they will take the time to read. And one of the senators um, is also a main sponsor of a of access to maternity care bills. So hopefully we'll be able to follow up with him and uh, continue to stay involved to make sure that Illinois moms get the best available care from us. So happy International Day of the Midwife. From me too, happy International Day of the Midwife. Okay. Hi, I am Melissa Wilmarth. I'm a student nurse midwife at Georgetown University. I am from San Diego, California. And a fun fact about my district is that we have ridiculous, delicious Mexican food literally on every single corner. It's a wonderful place to eat. Um, and in my district, um, there are approximately 43, well, there are about 1,028 midwives in the state of California and about 43,000 births that are attended by midwives. Um, the total number of births attended by midwives are just under 9% at 8.72. Um, and I was able and had the honor to visit with my um, Congress, um, excuse me, my Senator, Diane Feinstein. I met with her medical fellow, Dr. Tyler Lorig. And it was a really wonderful meeting. He had lots of questions about midwives. He didn't even, he honestly didn't even know anything about them. He was very, very interested to learn all about what we do and all the information that he could pass along um, to Senator Feinstein. So it was a really encouraging meeting. Um, I also had the opportunity to meet with the staffer of Congressperson, my actually my representative, um, Devin Nunes. I met with his assistant. Her name is Ruth Hazdevac. She was super awesome. Um, the, it, she had a lot of questions as well, and she was very interested in passing along the information to Mr. Nunes about midwives in the state of California. And it was really awesome to speak with her, most specifically because she is from, literally from right down the road from my hometown. And so she knows and understands that we have a lot of, a lack of midwives in my area. So it was really awesome to talk to her. And um, I was really nervous starting out lobbying, but it actually turned out to be really, really fun. Um, and I really hope I have the opportunity to do it again. Um, 
And yeah, so I hope you guys have a great day and happy International Day of the Midwife. Hello, um, my name is Amanda Willey, and this is Katia Wheelwright. We are both from Maryland, and um, an interesting fact about our state is the state sport is jousting. <laughs> so there are 290 midwives um, licensed to practice in our state, and midwives do 15% of all the vaginal births in the state. They have performed almost 7,000 births actually in the year 2013, our most recent data was from that year. Today, um, myself, Amanda, and Callie and Allie, who will speak next, um, visited Representatives Van Hollen and Harris and Senators Mikulski and McCartan. I was really impressed with how today went and how receptive um, the staff members were to meeting with us. We had one staff member whose wife is due on Sunday um, and was telling us how effaced her, his wife is. And so we were able to sort of speak on a midwife le level. And that was very encouraging, especially because the senator has been resistant to um, midwife supported bills in the past. So to have a staff member whose wife is going to be um, delivered by a midwife was very encouraging. And he's going to definitely speak to the senator on our behalf. Um, so, and one of the other senators that we met with um, was really able to um, to relate to the lack of access of care, especially with primary and maternity care providers that we are, um, with the bill that we're talking about, his county um, has no hospitals um, and no maternity providers or um, OBs or midwives. So he was really interested to hear about um, he was really interested to hear about um, some of the the bills that we were discussing and um, excited for more information. So it really was a great um, a great learning experience. Um, hi, I'm Callie. I was also with Katya and Amanda, and we um, I had a great experience in um, Representative Van Hollen's office. Um, we spoke with um, a, a young woman who um, one of his staffers. Who um, in her late 20s probably, and she knew nothing about midwifery. Um, so it was really cool to um, educate her on that. And um, just she was just so interested. So we actually spent a long time um, chatting with her um, about what midwives do. And uh, and then at the end of the meeting, she said, well, I just can't wait to have a midwife. <laughs> um, so it was it was a pretty cool experience. And uh, we got to talk about those, those bills with her. And she was um, very excited to chat um, with the representative about that. So it was, it was a pretty cool experience. Yep, and I'm Allie, and I'll just kind of uh, read on on everything that everyone said already. But it was just an amazing experience to um, share what we've been um, learning about this entire program and share our excitement. And it was really um, awesome to see how excited the people that we spoke with um, responded to us. And not many of them knew about midwives, and now they all seem to be much more educated and much more um, excited to share what we um, told them today. And hopefully this makes a big impact on um, what they relay to the congressmen and representatives that they work for. Um, I think that's all I have. Um, thank you and happy International Day of the Middle. Hi, my name is Jennifer Jagger, and I am faculty at Georgetown University. Um, I wanted to thank all of the students for both their full engagement and enthusiasm in today's most amazing opportunity. Uh, the students, um, some of them were nervous, all of them were excited, and all of them just represented the profession of midwifery, both here in the United States and around the world very well. Um, so a huge um, virtual applause, please, for the students and their just absolutely awesome participation. Happy International Day of the Midwife to everyone who is listening, tuning in. Uh, I want to also echo the sincere thanks expressed by um, Dr. Farley to the Virtual Day of the Midwife organizers, as well as the Georgetown University and uh, faculty and staff who were instrumental in putting this effort together, um, to the American College of Nurse Midwives volunteers, as well as staff for 
coordinating this effort and participation in the day of, um, and again, for just these, these awesome students for um, their energy and commitment to the profession, both um, clinically and also professionally advocating uh, for legislation and policy that can make our job easier and in turn make the care of women and babies improve outcomes um, and and make our communities healthier so it's it's comes full circle um, in closing I'd like to highlight a few things that the students remarked on uh, it is um, I'm in addition to being faculty at Georgetown University, I'm also the chair of a, a committee um, with the American College of Nurse Midwives who focus on political activities and on advocacy and government affairs work. Um, so I believe fully it is so important that midwives engage and advocate for changes in health policy, legislation, and regulation. Um, in their hospitals, in their cities, in their counties, in their states, um, at the federal level, which is what we all did today, uh, and, and also around the world. Uh, many midwives engage in global efforts um, and the challenges to provide high quality um, care to women and babies around the world is, is great. Um, but we, we have to start here at home too, because we could do a lot of things better. Uh, and we have the hands and the skills and the love and the dedication, um, but there are a lot of barriers to practice uh, that, that we need to, to get fixes for. Uh, and if we aren't going to policymakers, if we aren't engaging in dialogue about how to make change uh, and, and what change needs to happen, um, you know, then, it, then it, it just won't get easier to care for women and babies the way that they deserve to be cared for. Um, the healthcare system here in the United States is not perfect, uh, and we can't make um, great big leaps in, in changes, um, you know, all at the same time, but we, we do, um, we are trying to make incremental changes that will benefit the, the patients that we care for. Um, Specifically, there were three pieces of, of legislation, three bills that we were discussing with federal legislators um, today. The students and faculty brought um, the Quality Care for Moms and Babies Act, uh, which is a bill that would improve maternity care for women and families. Uh, it's um, Senate Bill 466, as, as well as a House bill, um, companion bill, 4695 and students were talking with their legislators today about quality measures and how if we pay for outcomes, good outcomes, right, that midwives typically um, provide, we're, we're really known for our high quality uh, outcomes, instead of for procedures that maybe don't have as, as high um, uh, outcomes, then we um, you know, this is a way to improve maternity care. Um, so really looking at what are quality measures, identifying areas, uh, opportunities for improvement, and seeing, um, you know, with, with changes in policy, how that can, can improve. Um, also, an, another bill that we looked at was Improving Access to Maternity Care Act of 2015, uh, which is a HRSA, um, the Health Resources Services Administration bill that looks at designated areas around the country that uh, have don't have adequate maternity care providers. Uh, right now, HRSA looks at um, shortages in terms of primary care providers, and this bill would help identify areas around the country where we need more maternity care providers uh, and, and pay more attention to the sometimes rural, sometimes urban areas um, where midwives and OBs um, you know, are needed in order to help the communities be healthy. There was also an, an education piece um, that we were talking with some senators and legislators, uh, representatives and their staff about. Um, it, it's a piece that looks at uh, how can we improve access for students to more preceptor sites. Um, and, and that's a, a reimbursement for teaching both midwives here in the United States that are teaching residents and medical students as well as midwifery students. Uh, how do we incentivize the growing of our young and um, helping to bring uh, more 
midwives and other maternity care providers um, into the workforce. Um, so all really important issues, um, specific federal legislation that can help with the maternity care um, problems that we have in the United States. Um, there are issues at the state level and again at local levels and global levels, um, but this is that was our focus for today. The students all have now the responsibility of following up with their state leaders, midwifery state leaders, as well as um, leaders at the national level, reporting to midwives in their state about the conversations that they've had um, with their representatives, and also encouraging other students and other midwives to engage uh, and to advocate for changes um, that will help us care for women and babies in, you know, in a, a more efficient and more effective way. Um, we can make a difference, not just at the bedside, but in terms of systems, change, um, and it, it takes days like this and everyone coming together and supporting each other um, to make that happen. So again, just a tremendous applause, pat on the back, job well done to the students and the faculty, and thank you to the organizers of the International Day of the Midwife and this opportunity for students uh, to cafe about their experiences. Uh, um, are there any questions from anyone in the audience? Feel free to type your questions in chat or to uh, open your microphone and ask a question there, but identify yourself uh, if you do grab the mic. Well, here's one, and maybe I'll just throw it out to the entire room. If you had an opportunity to speak to your legislators, what would you say to them about midwifery and midwifery? Hi, Lorraine. This is Cindy. Go right ahead. Uh, it looks like we don't have uh, many questions. Um, so my message to the global um, viewing audience is uh, to get involved in politics and policy, uh, whatever that looks like in your own country, and uh, to support midwifery. Do that in groups. I think it's uh, much more helpful and uh, user-friendly. Um, to teach our students uh, to value this activity is also important. And. Uh, it looks like we're going to end early, so thank you so much, Lorraine. You've been a great help, and happy International Day of the Midwife to everyone around the world. And happy International Day of the Midwife to you as well. How wonderful thank to you. hear the, what uh, these wonderful students have been doing. What a, what a terrific opportunity for you. They're all excited, too. All right, we're going to sign off, Lorraine. Thank you for your help. OK, Bye -bye. thank you very much. And uh, if people want to stay around and chat, that'd be lovely. But I am going to close the recording now.